Hello everyone, I'm Lonnie. I'm Mark. And this is Comic Book Malarkey? Yeah, Comic Book. Okay. I'm having to get Today, to... Today's Malarkey is Comic Book. <laughs> yes. Um, we're going to be talking about the Marvel event, Generations, which is just two issues old at this point, out of ten. This is going to be a weekly series. It's going to be going through like the end of September. And uh, so far we've had the two Hulks. Bruce Banner Hulk and the uh, Totally Awesome Hulk. And then we the second issue has been uh, Jean, Jean Grey, Grey and, and Phoenix, Grey. which is the young Jean Grey. Now, that's where it kind of gets confusing because we have a time-displaced Jean Grey who is younger from the past. That was actually one of the best lines in the, in the, in the, in the issue where the, um, the Phoenix was like, oh, so you're from the past. And then the young Jean Grey goes, the future, it gets confusing. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got young Jean Grey, who is from, let's just say, young Jean Grey from Uncanny X-Men number 10, comes forward to present time, and then goes back in time again to see, like, Uncanny Pretty dark X-Men. Phoenix. Like, Uncanny X-Men 130 Phoenix. Yeah. Um, Jean Grey or whatever. And this, yes, this was... After, I guess, there was a point where they thought the X-Men were dead. She did. Mm -hmm. But before the Dark Phoenix saga, where Mastermind was just beginning to follow her around. Right, exactly. And so there's like a very fine point here. And I'm pretty sure if you went back in the old issues, you could probably find this exact point. Um, But yeah, first, um, the Totally Awesome Hulk in the first issue is transported back in time. Uh according to him from Washington DC and that's what I talked about in our last video was the whole uh, secret empire thing I really think that the cosmic cube is what does that right uh, he ends up back there and ends up teaming up with Bruce Banner Hulk against uh, General Ross and his military people so it, and it looked like because it looked like it was right there at the very beginning too like it wasn't kind of very. Sort of he he like, just had like, a few mishaps. He was like living out of a garbage can and stuff. Yeah, because I mean, well, I mean, it was because it wasn't because from the time that he became the Hulk, like there was a brief period of time where he was gray, and then he went green, but he still kind of sort of had that. He he didn't have the Hulk smash, you know, mentality. He was still, he still had the intelligence. He still had a little bit of intelligence, and then somewhere shortly after that, he went to the Savage Hulk. Okay. And so this is pre Savage Hulk. Post Grey right. Hulk, so it's like right there in the beginning of Bruce Banner being the Hulk, and you know. So they're not necessarily being put back in time to the same place. No, it's different points. Yeah. Um, now generations. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up what to expect yeah. in the future. Uh, we're gonna be doing uh, Tony Stark and Riri Williams, which okay. is gonna be the Iron. Uh, the Spiders, which is going to be Peter Parker and Miles Morales. Technically, that that could happen now. They, that could they, happen today. But I, so I think what it is is that, especially you get a really good sense of it in the Jean in the Jean Grey one. They're being sent back to learn something. Yeah. And each one of them has a lesson that they're taking from it. I didn't really pick up on what Hulk's was, but Jean's was kind of sort of you know don't mess with the past kind of a thing. Uh, don't muddle in things. Um, so, in theory, there is something that Miles could go back and learn from a Peter that's closer to his age. Yeah. Also, we've got the Marvels, which is uh, Carol Danvers and Kamala Khan. Oh, that'll be interesting. The Thunder, which is going to be Odinson and Jane Foster. Uh, the Archers, which is going to be Clint Barton and Kate Bishop. Uh, then we've already had the Strongest. We've already had the Phoenix. The Best, which will be Logan and X-23. That'll be fun to read. That'll be interesting. Um the bravest, which will be Marvell and Carol Danvers. And Carol Danvers, if you notice, is going to be in two different ones. I saw that. So, uh, and then the Americas, which will be Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson. That'll be very interesting to see Sam Wilson go back in time and meet a pre-Hydra Steve Rogers, knowing what he knows now. Right. So, where's the one that? Because like they've got a poster of it hanging up there in the front, where it's Jane and old school Thor. Or is that going to be that one? That'll be that one. Okay. Why are they calling him the Odin son when he's Thor at that point in time? 
I, okay, Marvel, get, get your crap together. <laughs> um, you know, because it's Jane going back to see Thor, not Jane going back to see the Odin son. But, okay, whatever. Right. But I, I think it'll be interesting. Um, you know, I'll look forward to kind of sort of trying to pick up what each of the lessons is and seeing if I can, because I'm willing to bet that each of the lessons that they learn will tie into, like you were talking about, like they're getting teleported from some point in time at Secret War, in Secret Empire. Yeah. That maybe what they learn there is what will help them resolve the whole Secret Empire thing. Well, this Secret Empire goes into generations, in my opinion. Generations goes into legacy. Okay. So this is, of course, they're already starting to use the legacy numbering. Yep. Um, so I think that's what we're going to run into. We're going to see all of this is going to play in together somehow. And I really think that they, when legacy is in full bloom and generations is either wrapped or is beginning to wrap up, we're going to see a lot of your older characters. Steve Rogers, I think, will be back to normal. Um, Do you think that this is their effort to try to mimic DC's rebirth? Maybe. I don't know. Because, like, that was one of the things that DC did. Not with all their titles, but, like, say, like, Detective Comics went back to its original legacy. Action numbering. Comics did, too. And Action Comics did, too. Which are the two keystones of DC to begin with. Um, but, um, yeah. And I, I kind of sort of think that that might be it. I, I haven't really read much about legacy. I need to look into it. Well, here's but, the thing. The, the big thing about the comic market is how many volumes of X-Men, how many volumes of Avengers, how many volumes of the Hulk, how many volumes three of Captain or four America of each, right? have we had over the past 15 years? Um, Say three or four of each. X-Men, uh, like the 91 series, X-Men, became X-Men Legacy in the later numbering. Right. And then they booted it out and then they launched X-Men Legacy as its own thing with Legion. And then they also launched the X-Men title where Jubilee became a vampire. And that right. was like kind of the the ongoing narrative through that issue, that series. And then they, you know, did away with it and brought in the X-Men series of the all-female team. And then they ended it. And now well, here we are with like X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue and all that other stuff. So... They've just constantly been rebooting number one, rebooting number one, and I think that the market, they've discovered that it boosts sales for two or three months, and then it goes away. right back away. And I think they've gotten to the point where they're like, you know what, maybe going back to the original numberings. And I mean, they're doing this with just about every title, including Cable. Cable's yeah. going to be like number 120 or something like that. Uh, Venom is. I think Venom's yeah, at number Venom 153 like, yeah. now. Uh, we're going to have probably the Avengers going back, the Hulk going back, probably the Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, I, I, I don't think it'll happen, but as part of the legacy, I would like to see the Fantastic Four make a return. That, I don't think it'll happen because of the whole Fox deal. Yeah, I think that Fox has pretty much got them locked out of that. And I, well, why, are, why are they giving X-Men such a so, good run right now? Because the X Men movies have been financially lucrative, the Fantastic Four movies have not, and so they're trying to get it away to make so, yeah, Fantastic so, yeah, Four. Yeah, they're lucrative. trying to. They're trying to. The story that I heard it was that Marvel did everything that they could, cause did everything that they could to make it to where you can make a movie, but you have no other licensing rights. So all you have to go off is the movie to make fun, like make movie off it. Like they don't have like Sony. To, is it Sony or Fox that has? I think it's Sony. That has, Sony has Spider-Man. Sony has Spider-Man. So Fox. Yeah, Fox has... Fox uh, has X-Men and, and Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four. So they've got the movie rights. They don't have the rights to make action figures. They don't have the rights to make clothing. They don't have the rights to make anything else. So this is... You know, you've put out three movies that have pretty much bombed. Yeah. And it, now you only have the movies to live with. So either you can make another bomb movie and lose money on it. Or you can give us the rights to our titles back. Personally, yeah. I would love to see Marvel pull all their movie title rights back to them, but they're like Fox is never going to let go of X Men. Now everybody, you know, oh, give the rights back to Marvel. Give the rights back to Marvel. Marvel made this bed. No, we're, we're kind of getting off 
Well, and I agree with you. They did. They, because they did make this bid. They filed bankruptcy, and as part of that, because you know they completely mismanaged. It was part of the comic book when the bubble burst back in the late nineties. Right. And uh, so to get that money and to remain lucrative and stable, uh, they had to sell off a lot of the movie and television rights to a lot of their properties. And uh, they kept the Avengers and some of the core people because nobody cared for them back then. Yep, that's true. X-Men was the hot property. (laughs) Fantastic Four was the hot property. Nobody cared about the Avengers. And now the Avengers are the thing because of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But anyway, back to Generations. Um, We we tend to do that. The train Um, went that way. (laughs) Yeah. uh, I was a really big fan of the uh, Galactus appearance. Spoiler alert! And the Jean Grey. That was that was pretty, like the whole the whole watching Phoenix like defend like like it's different to see a Phoenix that's like this planet's under my protection go away instead of the you know the world eater and everything like the Shire yeah. Empire painted it as you know. Well, that was what she was to begin with. She was good, and then she became well, dark, corrupted. Well, see, that's just it. This is another revamp because when Jean was originally the Phoenix, right? Yeah. She did all this stuff, and then, like, the Shire Empire came in, and they're like, she blew up a galaxy. And, you know, this wasn't, like, a recent thing. It was like, the Phoenix is a cosmic entity that is a destroyer. Yeah. And that was what the Shire came for. They wanted to imprison it and everything. So, it was interesting to see, an like, Gene, like, take that aspect or take that power and do something with it. That wasn't... You know, oh, destructive or, or catastrophic or anything. Which like is that. really interesting because that, that was like a major retcon, and that uh, the X Men didn't know it at the time, but they could have just handed Gene over, had the Empire kill her off, and they would have And then had they still could have gotten Gene back because, yeah. <laughs> because that Gene wasn't the real Gene Grey. Yeah, it was Phoenix. And it was Gene Phoenix was actually in, in a, a cocoon, cocoon in the bottom of the ocean. Jamaica Bay. <laughs> That's just. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, that was and that was Marvel's way of going. Oh, we just killed off a really popular character. How can we bring her back? Oh, wait, she's a clone. I will say though that the uh, that little two parter that set up X Factor. Oh yeah. With Gene, uh, that was like part one was in the Avengers, part two was in Fantastic Four. Uh, it was actually a really good little two part story. It had a lot of characters. You know, yeah. Reed Richards was there trying to figure it out. But um, back to Generations. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we don't really have a lot to go on right now. We just it, have the two issues. Yeah, we have two issues. Uh, people are being transported back in time to certain points and are getting to see things. And apparently whatever happened there was so important that the Watcher showed up. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was Phoenix and Galactus. The Watcher had to show up. Yeah. But I like the fact that the Watcher pulled young Gene aside and said, what you do Determines. right here will affect everything else. Yeah, so... And that was, let me see if I can find the actual quote. Now, this is a classic case of... The Watcher not being a Watcher. No, i am say this is a classic case of the actual uh, creators of this throwing you a curveball. You know, don't ever take what the creators say before the story launches. Take it with a grain of salt. Right. Because according to Marvel's editor-in-chief... This was weeks ago. He says, these stories do happen. They really count. They really matter. This isn't some alternate reality story or some time travel story. Even though technically this is a time travel story. Well, yeah, but... Is it? Maybe not. And we're just... Well, typically in time travel stories, you can't affect the past or you can't affect, you know, like, you know. So, I don't know. Maybe that was the curveball because it does appear to be time travel because they appear to be getting transported back, unless it's some sort of an illusion they're being subjected to. But he did say you don't take these characters off the board with the intention to keep them off the board forever. One of the tropes of our medium is characters get a second wind, they die and come back. That's part of the beauty of what we do. He hmm. just basically said, "Hey, none of these guys are going to stay dead." Right. Now here's the thing: Do you think like X twenty three might go back? Wolverine, and then Wolverine come back with her? That would be interesting. Although, I mean, I've always liked X-23. I've liked her from the new X-Men. I liked when they had her, you know, running around with uh, Hellion. Like, I, I, I've always liked her. Um, 
So, you know, I do like the fact that they've got her in her own title and she's not blanketed under that whole X-Men thing. I haven't even read it. Uh, she, Never. You know, it. I mean, it, it's an interesting read. It's a different read than if you're reading Logan, but, yeah. you know, but she's got a completely different upbringing than Logan. Yeah, I didn't even know they have an Old Man Logan series. Oh, yeah. So that's another one. Old He's Man everywhere. Logan, we talked about Leopard, this. He's yeah. everywhere. That's what we I have talked saying. about that before. But anyway, He's that's about all we can ring out of Generations with only two issues. Um, so far, been really good. Uh, now, granted, I will say I like Secret Empire more I so agree. far. But I think whenever we get around the midpoint of Generations, we're going to have a lot better idea of what's what they're going trying on, to shoot what for. to expect, that kind of thing. So, uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it for this kind of sort of so far review of Marvel Generations, which will be, I think, leading into Legacy over the next. Uh, next month or two but anyway that's it for this episode of be sure to subscribe for the drawing august 13th that'll actually likely be tonight if we're this will be airing on august so you've got like one last chance to get in yeah that is true so hit the subscribe subscribe. button one last chance if you need to know the instructions rewind and read those (laughs) watch us again (laughs) because i i find it kind of redundant to uh you know talk about the rules to enter when they're literally scrolling across the screen during the whole video so right um but anyway that's it for this review of the first two issues of marvel's generation series uh i'm lonnie i'm mark and we are untitled Earth network brought to you from Infinity Infinity Flux, Flux, right here in Hickson, Tennessee, Tennessee. and this has been Comic Book Malarkey.